بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has blessed us to be discussing the holy verses of Quran and the narrations of Ahlul Bayt alayhum as -salam. We have reached Surah Al-Baqarah and the verse that where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states alladheena talking about the pious people muttaqeen alladheena yu'minuna bil ghayb those who believe in the unseen wa yuqimuna as-salah and they maintain the prayer wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqoon inshallah one or two hadith about yuqimuna as-salah an explanation and inshallah we continue wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqoon imam sadiq alayhi salam says this is in also Kafi Sharif, Noble Kafi, volume 3, uh, page 343, where Imam Sadiq says, Tasbih Fatima alayha salam fi kulli yawmin, fi dubri kulli salatin, ahabbu ilayya min salat alf raka'a fi kulli yawm. If we want to add more and not to be happy and content with the bare minimum, you know, some people, when it comes to their religiosity, they do the bare minimum. But when it comes to the worldly affairs, they go for the highest and the highest, and they are not satisfied and happy with the bare minimum, and they're not content. Well, we want to shift and change and change our perspective differently. When it comes to religiosity, we shouldn't be satisfied with the bare minimum. Do a little bit extra, a little bit more mustahabbat, add on to it. When it comes to the worldly affairs, Bring the expectation a little bit lower. We see how much content, how much more happy, inshallah, we will be. Imam Sada alayhi salam says, after salah, inshallah, our salah, we have done it. We have given the importance of salah. As we mentioned within the previous episode, we sit on our prayer mat, we wait for the salah. We pray our prayer in the same spot in our house, so our mind becomes in a habit of when we come... We get to the salah, knows, okay, this is the time for communicating with the Creator, and we have an organized place. After salah, Tasbihat Fatima to Zahra, Salamullah Aliha, very, very, very recommended. This will be our first action plan in this episode, inshallah. 34, after we say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, 34 times, Allahu Akbar, 33 times, Alhamdulillah, and 33 times, Subhanallah. Imam says, do for me doing this Tasbihat Fatima to Zahra after Salah, it's more loved to me, more loved, I love it more than praying 1,000 rak'ah every day. This is how much more thawab it has. Tasbihat Fatima to Zahra. Very, it doesn't take maybe more than, less than, it takes less than a minute, more uh, probably. So, our Salah, it finishes. When the time finishes, we have to start seeing the effect and the influence of our prayer on our demeanor. Number one, being thankful because we read two times, uh, if it's Salat al-Subh, two times we read Surah Al-Hamd, being uh, thankful, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. So that should always remind us, after our morning prayer, until Salat al-Dhuhr, we have to keep being thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as we can, as much as we can, saying verbally thankful, in our heart being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in our action showing thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then always seeking aid from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because in our salah again we said So we always seek aid from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, these are the effects of salah that should come into our lives. So this is the perspective that salah has given us. And also being asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to be on the right path within every decision that we make. That needs, that needs constant reminder because we keep forgetting. That's why we need to pray Salat al-Subh. Start our day with a meditation, with remembering to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what He has given us. And asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our day and to give, aid us in our challenges, what we discussed about it within the previous episode. And then asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, اِهْدِنَ الصَّرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Oh Allah, keep me firm and steadfast on your path. I want to get to you, Allah. I want, I'm seeking nearness to you. So we go through our daily life. We go to work, we go to school, at home, with kids, with parents, with husband, with wife. Whatever we do, we keep these three elements in mind. 
probably by the time of Salat, Dhuhr time comes, same way that our physical body needs again boost of energy, boost of protein, or our soul also needs another boost. Salat of Dhuhr, four rak'ah Dhuhr, four rak'ah Asr. Again, we gain that spirituality. Our soul is revived. Our soul is cleansed from the sins that we might have committed from the from being negligent toward Allah, other, other human being, the Creator, and everything that is surrounding us, again, that boost again. Until Maghrib, again, we might go through things that we're supposed not to go through. Again, that cleansing before we go back to sleep. So this is what we need to get out of Salah and making sure that God forbid, God forbid, we are not from those people who don't pray. Inshallah, none of us are. We, inshallah, we believe in the importance of Salah, but... Chapter 74, verse 43, we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings within the holy verses of Quran, people ask, people of heaven ask from people of hellfire, what made you into hellfire? What happened to you? How comes you end up in hellfire? قَالُوا لَمْ نَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ They will answer, people of the hellfire will tell the other people, we were not among those people who prayed. So, God forbid, God forbid, inshallah, we are not from those people. And then again, advice to the parents where they have said, what can we do for our kids to be praying and loving prayer? Allah says, chapter 20, verse 132, And enjoin prayer on your family and your followers and steadily adhere to it. Don't give up. Keep reminding them in the nice of manner, with gifts, with uh, appreciation, with telling people, mashallah, he's praying, see how he likes to be appreciated and how he likes to be thanked, buy him a gift, slowly, 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 and keep wastabir alayha, and steadily adhere to it. Continue remind them, and remind them, and remind them, and don't give up, and you cannot force. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasn't forced us. So we have to not give up and keep, that becomes an action plan, and keep telling them, keep reminding them in different ways, different times. We do whatever it takes to, to remind. Let's go to the next phrase within this verse. And inshallah, we finish this verse tonight. Time allows us. In Quran, 27 times giving charity has been mentioned with establishing Salah. If you remember, within the previous episode, we said that if we summarize the mission of the Prophet to two objectives they had, two missions that they had, one, to construct and rectify the relationship between people and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which that's the epitome of that is Salah, and the second mission was to establish that relationship between people and other people amongst themselves. So that is zakat. We discussed about it within the previous episode. It's about giving and giving everything that we can from everything. Not only some people might think of zakat. They think of zakat. They think of wajibat act. Wajibat. It's not only, is not only wajib money that we must pay, which is khums and zakat. No other than that. Because zakat, it's only uh, applied to nine things. The wajib zakat applies to nine things. A ca uh, to cows, if a person has cows, or has camels, or has sheep, or has gold, like gold which is the coin, the coin money, not the normal gold, the jewelry that they were, no. The coin, if it's a golden coin that people buy and sell with it, or silver. And from commodities, raisin, date, barley, and wheat. Well, this day and age, typically people don't have it, especially people in the West. We don't have cows, we don't have camels, we don't have sheep, and we don't have golden coin or silver. And we don't have raisin and date and barley and wheat. So we say, okay, we pray. And this doesn't, if we want to translate it, which none of the uh, interpreters have said this applies to zakat wajib. No, this is general to all sort of giving. And it's not only to khums. Anything that we can give. As we mentioned, for example, zakat al min ashroh. That uh, if a person has knowledge, must uh, educate other people and spread it out where Imam al-Sadaq in Tafsir Nur al-Thaqalain, volume 1, 
page 26 says under this verse وَمَنْ مَا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ Imam says أَنَّ مَعْنَاهُ The meaning of this verse is أَنَّ مَعْنَاهُ وَمِنْ مَا عَلَّمْنَاهُمْ يَبُثُونَ From what we have taught them from what us Ahlul Bayt we have taught them they spread this knowledge that we have taught them it's very important this is a duty upon each and every one of us the knowledge that we have gained from Ahlul Bayt to spread to other people that is a kind of zakat especially after the tragedy of uh, of uh, New Zealand New Zealand and the 50 Muslim brothers who were killed, people are learning about Islam. Well, it is obligatory upon us, the followers of Ahlul Bayt salam, to teach them and educate them about the knowledge of Quran and from the perspective of Ahlul Bayt salam. So, Salah is some, one thing, Zakat next to it. Again, 27 times where Salah has been mentioned in Quran, Zakat has been next to it. Salah, Zakat. Salah, Zakat. Salah, Zakat. Salah without Zakat is not accepted. And Zakat without Salah, the same thing. We have, we've seen within the story of the life of the Prophet, according to the historians, he came and he kicked some people out of the masjid. Why? He said they do Salah, but they don't pay Zakat. Zakat is any charitable thing that we can give to other people. This is again, Zakat, specific Zakat to nine things. For example, if a person has... Uh, 40 sheep. Somebody has a farm, has 40 sheep. Every year that comes to it, he has to give one sheep to the needy people. Or if he has five camels, he gives one sheep. So that is zakat wajib. And also zakat al fitra is also zakat wajib. No. From whatever we have, the translation goes, and spend, spend out of what have what we have provided for them, whatever it is. Again, as we mentioned within the previous episode, if it's a reputation, if it's a knowledge, if it's a connection, some, he knows someone that can solve someone's problem. He's a doctor, he sees needy people, well, he helps them, he visits them freely. If he can pay for, from his own pocket for the medicine, well, if he can do it, he must do it. If I know how to, for example, fix a car, I see one of my community members, his car broke down. And he has nobody to fix it for him. Well, I do it for him for free. Whatever specialty that we have, whatever that we have, whatever talent that we have, whatever potentials that we have within us, it is Allah that has given us, we must provide to other people. And we must be very, very careful not to neglect this part. So the action plan will be, let me diagnose myself. Let me go through my lifestyle. Have I had this kind of personality of giving to the Islamic centers they need, to the needy people, orphans, sick people, people who want to get married. For example, right now in Iraq, I have people contacting me because I came from state, they think, okay, I have connection. Alhamdulillah, I try to call other people, collect some money, help people who want to get married, but they don't have the means to, to get married. Or they have sick people. We had a case, for example, a family had a cancer and they had to go to chemotherapy but they don't have money to provide we talk with some people they provided and we alhamdulillah bl were blessed to be the means to this so do whatever you can so whatever that you have you don't have to be a millionaire to pay no you have a ten dollars you can pay a dollar pay that dollar i conclude with this story rasulullah was sitting within the masjid a person came and he gave him one dinar as a charity and he left Another person came and gave him 10 dinars as a charity. He left. The third person came and he paid him 100 dinars and he left. Rasulullah told his companions that these three people in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are equal. The companions were surprised. How come the per first person paid one dinar? The second person paid 10 dinars. The third person paid 100 dinars. How come they are the same? Rasulullah said the first person, all of his belonging was 10 dinars. He paid one tenth. The second person, all of his belonging was 100 dinar. He paid 10, that was, was one tenth. The third person had 1000 dinar. He paid 100, that was one tenth. That's the ratio that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees. So if we don't have it yet, 
Let us have that characteristic. Let's ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us that blessing to be able to give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa We will conclude with the most important dua and that is dua faraj insha'Allah asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam Mahdi ajalullah ta'ala faraj al-sharif Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Allahumma kun li waliyika al-hujjat ibn al-Hasan salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaih fi hadha sa'ata wa fi kulli sa'ah waliyan wa hafadha wa qa'idan wa nasara wa dalilan wa ayna hatta tuskana wa ardaka taw'a wa tumatta'u fiha tawila barahmatika ya arhamar rahameen